All right, so welcome today. We'll be covering the profile system, how it works, and what kinds of uses you can get out of it. So specifically, we'll be going through configurations um, and effects that configs can have. So for instance, rounding with those uh, configurations. How to use the profile inquiry screen. So in other words, how the qualifiers will work, the different modes and the content that you'll see examples of data and, and how you can actually view that and also down to exporting that data to a text file for you to manipulate outside of ACR. Showing you how the data is displayed and how you can manipulate those and updating automatically versus manually. Okay, so to start with we'll be looking at configurations. Now for that, they're actually kept in miscellaneous configurations, so we can just do a search for that. Okay. As you can see here, you've got a profile update. We click in the drop-down list. Now depending on the kind of system that you're using, uh, you'd be looking at a different setting here, depending on what you're using. But that basically that means your day-end report. So the difference between the two is whether you want it based on your day-end report or everything. It's quite as simple as that. Now that's something that you guys can change and I'd recommend changing it to all invoices just to cover everything. Okay. There's also a couple of things. Uh, reporting and entry margin, which are ACR only configs. It's basically the difference between markup or margin. So a company would decide whether they would go with one or the other, um, predominantly with the way they work things. It's worked out slightly differently. The only difference is whether it's divided by cost or divided by your sell price. So you know all about that sort of stuff. I won't go any, into any further detail. But the idea is that you can have a different setting to reporting as opposed to your entry margin, which I wouldn't recommend really. It's best to have them both the same. So whether you have markup or margin. Now as you'll see through this, um, the configs where you wherever you see it being either markup or margin will depend on that config. Now the effects that configs can have, um, specifically I'm referring to rounding here. Um, when systems are actually set to incur rounding, the figures will round at the transaction line level and then add to the previous day's totals. As the profile system is updated automatically overnight, that's if you have it set, which the majority of sites would do, it takes the total from the previous day, calculates the current trading day's totals, then adds them together to be displayed in the profile system for the beginning of the next working day. So it's not live data, so to speak. It's updated nightly. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go and have a look at the profile system. All we need to do is type in profile and we've got that coming up on, on screen. So the first thing we'll do is let, let's look at the profile inquiry. So this is the first thing that you see when you're coming in. As you can see, you've got a profile option, you've got a search box here, and a drop-down list to the right. So the first thing here, this is what you're basing your profile on. So for instance, everything in here, you can base it on that. So whether it be customer, whether it be product, lots of different options there. So I'm going to leave it at customer, which is the default. Now in here, we can put in a certain customer if we wanted to, so a specific customer ID to only bring up that customer. And the same goes with all the rest. If, if you've set it to salesperson, you can put a salesperson ID in there for only that information. However, I'm going to be leaving it blank so that you can see everything on screen. The drop-down list here at the moment has a has options as what you can see. You've got your units sold, so that's your quantity your sales dollars, which is the sale value, and then your gross profit dollars. You do have a fourth one in there, which is your gross markup on sales. So I'm going to be bringing up 
a list of all the customers and the sales dollars. So this is basically sales history. And bear in mind, you can actually cross-reference it to your sales history report because that is what the information is based on as well. So it's like an interactive way of looking at your sales history. So if I click Find, it'll just bring up a warning saying there's a large amount, but what we're looking at is subtotals anyway. So we'll click Yes. And as you can see, you've got a list of all the customers, and it defaults to the current debtor's month by what you can see on the right-hand side. So obviously we can go back by clicking on the arrows down the bottom here. We can go back to months. Now bear in mind this is a test database, so of course this is going to be not very interesting data. You can also go forward. So for instance with invoicing, you can do forward invoices to have a look at what's going on there. And in this instance, yes, there are forward invoices values in there. So as you can see, the ID shows the customer ID or whatever selection you've made in the profile area down here and the description of that. And then you can see all these different months that you can move in and out of. On the right hand side, you've got your totals. So that's for each customer. And at the bottom, you've got your totals as well, and that's for each month. Okay, as you can see at the bottom, it's based on your financial year, not your calendar year. Okay. Another thing on this screen is you can actually sort the columns. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to see the highest to lowest of sales for each customer on a particular month. If I click on the one at the bottom, it's sorted in ascending order. I want to click it again to sort in descending order. You can do the same for any single button that you've got up here. So for instance, I wanted to sort by customer description. Click on that and that will do so. Click again to sort the other way. Okay. As you no doubt can see, there's actually a line here with question marks. Now that would indicate that these are cash sales because the other ones here we've got are actually account customers. So generally speaking, this will be cash sales up here. Okay. Now, let's say for instance, we've got this customer and we want to see what products make up that value. Well, I'll actually do it on the cash sales, but see if we can do anything on that. No, we can't. So we'll do a, an account customer. So if we double click on that, that is the same as clicking on the details button down here. Now this is basically sorting by another method underneath that. So we're looking for this particular customer and we want to look at, let's say for instance, the product groups that were sold, the, the products that were part of product groups that were sold to that customer. So we'll click on the product group and then click OK. This brings up another screen, as you can see by profile level two. Click and drag that down. You can still see that the other screen is still there, but you've still got this other screen on top. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the different product groups of the products that were sold to that customer and the value of each. So that's a further breakdown. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to export this data. Nice and easy. What we do is we actually click on the File Dump button. That will do all of it. It won't do the line we've just highlighted. It'll do the whole lot we've got on screen. So if we click File Dump, it's going to ask us where do we want to save it and what do we want to call it. Now, rather than just typing in a file name here, we are going to click on this box with three dots. And for the sake of the webinar, I'm going to save it to a local drive under the ACR folder. So I'm going to do profile.txt. It will always output as a tech tab delimited text file as everywhere else in the system. So once you've given it a file name down here and you've located where you want to save the file to, click on the Save button and you can see the file name and location have actually loaded into the file name box. If you're happy with that, click Create. And it says File Created Successfully. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to open Excel and I'm going to show you loading it into Excel.
And there it is. So we open Excel first and then we either do Control O or File Open and we navigate to where we've saved that file. Now we called it Profile, so if I click on one and click P, it should take me to the first instance and that's where it is there. Another option you can do here uh, that can be very handy is if you know that's the last file you've output, sort by the date modified. Now this is a Windows thing and that will by default show you the last one at the top. If you wanted to show the last one at the bottom, you just click the date modified one again. I like to do it this way because it's a lot easier to find files that you've just output. So there's that file there as well. We'll click open. The first screen here, we leave it at delimited because that's the type of file that it is. Click on next. Now we know it's a tab delimited file, so we select tab and make sure nothing else is selected here. And as we can see, it's broken each uh, column down into different, uh, sorry, each piece of information into different columns. Okay, so we click next. Now here is a more important screen. So take note of this screen because if you've got any ID fields like customer ID, product group ID, you do need to change them to a text field by clicking on it and then clicking on text up here. Now the reason for that is it's good to get into that habit because if you're exporting data and then you want to go back and import data, so if you're using the export import facility, the way Excel works is it, if you don't change it to a text column, it will put zeros in front of it. It's just an Excel thing, so it's just a matter of getting into a habit of making sure all ID columns are marked as text. Okay, so let's check the rest. They're all numbers, so we shouldn't need to worry about it. And we'll click Finish. And as you can see, once I resize all of the columns, all your information is there, so you can do whatever you want with these figures. Uh, you've exported them out. You can copy them into other spreadsheets and do what you want with them. So that's nice and easy there. Okay. So what we'll do here is we'll quit this screen to go back to the first screen. The other options down here you've probably seen is the comparative button. Now, as opposed to single, comparative is obviously comparing either a, a percent variance or a dollar variance, depending on which one you choose. And once I click on this button, you'll see that it will actually do a variance of the current year and the year before. And depending on the selection that I make, the dollar or the percentage variance, it will show the difference here. So again, as you can see down the bottom, we've got arrows, so we can go back to the previous month. And I know it's not very good data, but it's showing you an example of what's there. So if we go back to January, if we go forward for the financial year, it's showing year-to-date figures. So based on the 2014 financial year and the 2015 financial year. And that gives you the variance in that there. Now, just for completeness, I will show you the percent variance. And there you go, nice and easy. And again, moving forward, year-to-date values. Okay, so let's say, for instance, we wanted to do something else. We just clear. It will clear it for the next one. And one thing to note with Profile is that it will remember the last settings. So if I quit out and go back in, it will remember the setting I left it on last. So if you're using your own computer often and you're using a particular um, way of, of looking at the data, then you know that it will remember it from the last time. Now with the data, it's actually going to display figures net of any discounts, whether they're taken up or not. So that information comes from the customer file. If, configured, if the customer is configured for settlement discount and the discount is not applied, the profile system will still reflect the discount. It's showing you worst case, so to speak. So for this reason, profile figures 
will vary from the age trial balance and profit and loss statement according to this. Okay. So as you probably know, Profile System does update overnight and that's via something called the Job Master in the system. If it's not updating overnight, we can have a look into that and it could just be a matter of enabling that. The other thing is we can actually manually update the figures and that's by using this menu button, Update Profile Stats. Now, depending on how much data is in the system, it could take quite a few minutes to do that. So I would probably recommend doing that not very often um, and perhaps when you're at, you know, at a slow time in your business and you can afford to sit and wait for your computer to, to finish doing the update. Okay, so when you run it, it's actually going to be updating the stats between when it was last run and the time it's run. So best case scenario, it's going to be updating up to a day's worth of information. There are various reports which are updated when the profile system data is updated and they are the daily sales analysis, the area analysis, the group analysis, management information utility, the class analysis and for shop to talk users only, store statistics. That's basically all there is to it when it comes to profile. So it's nice and easy but very interactive and very user friendly.